this morning. Let's stand and sing if you can. Um, I know some of you may have eaten like we did, and it may be tough to get up this morning. So let's stand and sing praise him, praise him, and I sing praises. Father God, here in the midst of this Thanksgiving season, Lord, it ought to stir praise in us when we begin to look around, Lord, and see the blessings that you bestow on us every single day. So, Lord God, I pray today that we'll bring that praise before you, God, as that offering is the way it's presented in the Bible, Lord, that as if we were laying it before you, God, that we bring our hearts there and ask you to, to work in us, God, and to bring us to become the people that you want us to be, God. And Father, I pray today, Lord, as we study your word, Lord, about Thanksgiving, about what the Bible says about it, Lord, that, that it opens it up, Lord, that it's not a day thing, it's a, li a living thing, Lord. It's an attitude that we want to carry with us every single day. So God, we ask for you to bless our day of worship, Lord, as we sing and we pray and we study together, Lord. I pray that we grow together, Lord, and that we give you honor and praise and glory, God, that our lives begin to, 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 to be what you called us to be, Lord. And that's the, the, the ecclesia, the called out group, God, that we ought to be different than the world, Lord, because we have the life-changing, eternal message about the salvation of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you get glory and that we get our attitude right. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You be seated. Good to see you in Pickensville. I hope you had a wonderful week. What a great time of year it is, amen? Just to think about blessings and the Thanksgiving, the, the, to have thanks that God puts around us on an everyday basis. So I'm glad that you're here. I'm thankful that you're here to worship with us. Got a few things to mention to you. Family supper night, in case you didn't get enough to eat, we're going to try it again Wednesday night, okay? It's potluck, so that's always good. Potluck is wonderful in this church. We have such wonderful cooks. So please be here and join with us. We eat at 6.30. We'll have Bible study at 7. It's just a great time. We're studying the book of Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesian church, and there's been some good stuff, so I hope that you'll be here for that, okay? Also, over here, you see the Alabama...
Children's Home. I have messed that up every time this year. The Alabama Baptist Children's Home, and we supply gifts for several children and one parent this year. Uh, I hope that you got a name off there. If you got one, you feel like you can get some more. There are a couple of inexpensive ones, but there's some big ones too. So please, today kind of is, we need to get them off the board today. So please make your pick, get that thing, and we need to bring those back December the 5th, which will be next Sunday. So so just put that in your notes, okay? <laughs> Uh, choir practice today after church, so uh, it was wonderful to walk through here and hear the Christmas songs last week uh, as they practice. It's a great time for you to join them. It's a great time for you to be a part uh, of what we're going to do for Christmas, so I hope that you'll take part in that, okay? Pray for my voice this morning. As you can tell, it's not the best, okay? So anybody had a birthday since the last time we met? Anybody? Nobody? All right. Well, we'll stand up together. Today is actually my son's birthday. My baby is 30 years old today. Stand up. Anyway, hey, y'all time. Look out. Smile at them. Hey, y'all. All right, you remain standing, and we'll sing praises to our Lord some more. time of giving. 
Father God, we do ask your blessing, Lord, as we come together to give together, Lord. It's a part of us being one family, Lord, that we invest in your kingdom together. Lord, it gives us the ability to have greater buying power and to do more things when we go together, Lord. God, this is not the only place we give, but it is, Lord, the place that you've ordained, Lord, for us to bring to you the tithe and the offerings and the gifts. So, Lord, bless them. Lord, pour out your blessing on them. And each person that gives, God, open up their heart to let them see and feel what, it, what an impact that they have in the kingdom. So, Lord, I ask you today, bless our giving as a part of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
Wow. That was almost, that was, <laughs> that's a wonderful, wonderful song. Amen. Jeremy, you did a great job with it. Something about praise in the midst of a broken heart that, that really gets God's attention. It, it truly does. And I thank you for that, Jeremy. Take your Bible. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 to 20, and then we're going to go also to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses, uh, verse 16 through 18. A couple of places it'll be familiar to you when we get there. You see the title of this is A Proper Perspective on Thanksgiving. Sir Moses Montefiore had a motto that he gave to his family, and it was just three words. He said, think and thank. Think and thank. He said there was no way that you could seriously think about your life that it would not cause thankfulness to flow out of you. As a matter of fact, the old Anglo-Saxon language in that the word thankfulness means thankfulness. It actually means that. I look out across all of you, and yes, we go through tough times, and yes, we have problems. We deal with, with serious hurt, serious heartache at times. But listen, when you think about God's goodness, it draws forth thankfulness. This past week was Thanksgiving, of course, and uh, it's the one day we set aside each year that we say, okay, on this day, we're going to think and thank. And certainly, we as believers have more to be thankful for than anybody. And, and while there's nothing wrong with setting aside a day, that's a good thing to do that. But the Bible tells us that it should be a continual thing, that it should be an attitude of the heart, that it should be daily, it should be with an attitude of thanking the Lord for everything that is given us. In Ephesians, it says this in 519, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, that all of you know, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Paul's main thought in both of those, thing, uh, both of those places of Scripture are about praise and thanksgiving, and how they're, they're just linked together. They're part of what happens when you turn your heart and head toward the Lord, Okay. But there are other important words in there, and they are always, without ceasing, meaning that you could do it continually, and in all things. Those, those attitudes ought to be with us all the time. And, and it sounds like Paul's talking about a worship service when he says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. But he is not talking about a church service. That is not what he's talking about. He is talking about you personally. It is what it's about inside of you, this attitude of gratitude, if you will, an attitude of the heart. It's about who we are to be with each other. It's how we're to treat people. We're to greet them with that kind of attitude. Now, here's the thing that makes it tough. He says, in all circumstances. <laughs> there, there are times in life where, where it's hard, isn't it? A proper perspective is the only way to get Thanksgiving out of it. Most of you have heard a very similar thing to what I'm going to read. Uh, a young lady wrote home from college, said, Dear Mom, sorry I haven't written sooner. My arm was broken in the fall. Oh, yeah, I broke it and my left leg when I jumped from the second floor of my dormitory when we had that fire that destroyed everything that I had. But we were lucky. A young service station attendant saw the blaze and called the fire department. They were there in minutes. I was in the hospital for a few days, but Paul, the service attendant, was there with me every single day. And because it was taking so long for our dormitory to get livable again, I moved in him, with him, and he's been so nice. And Paul and I have decided that we want to get married as soon as he can get a divorce. I hope things are fine at home. I'm doing fine and will write more now that my arm is better. Love, your daughter, Susie. And then she had a P.S. down at the bottom. It says, none of the above is true, but I did get a C in psychology and I flunked out of chemistry. I just wanted you to have the proper perspective when I told you that, okay? <laughs> to be thankful in all circumstances is just a proper perspective. And of our circumstances and of the Lord. You know, it's only... You know, it's only then that we're able to give thanks to the Lord and truly, truly mean it. 
Now, before we get to the positive, we're going to look at what the Bible says about Thanksgiving. But before we get to the positive, let, let's deal with some negative things, uh, uh, things that steal away our gratitude. And in your notes there, just, just follow me. You know what I'm going to call them? I'm going to call them gratitude robbers, things that will snatch gratitude right out of your lips and right out of your heart. Number one is our pride. This is that attitude. Well, look, I've worked hard for this. This is what I've done. I built this company or I built this home and I, I make sure that the kids do this and I do this and you just have an eye problem. It's all about you. And we all experience that and we get our feelings hurt sometimes when we get overlooked and we can't see gratitude for somebody else or something else because we're all wrapped up in ourselves. King Louis XIV says, every time that I promote someone to a prominent position, I make one guy happy and I make a hundred people mad. We can't get over the fact that it's about us. So pride gets in the way of that. We'll come back to that in just a second. A second attitude that keeps us from being thankful is a critical spirit, uh, a, one of constant complaining. So I gave you an assignment last week, how did you do, to go one day without complaining, okay? Anybody? Anybody want to testify? You got it, Charlie? You did it? I hear you, baby. Uh, you did it? All right. What'd y'all do, go out in the woods and sit on a stump all day? Uh, I'm just glad my day of not complaining was not yesterday after the Iron Bowl. So anyway, we'll just leave that where it is. But somebody that's got a critical spirit, instead of being grateful, they'll always find something to complain about. I came across complaints that teenagers had about gifts that they got at Christmas. And they were tweets. And I had to clean them up. Let's just put it that way. But listen to some of these things. If I got a black iPad, I would kill myself. I told my dad, if he got me the iPhone 10 instead of the 13, I'd throw it at him. I swear to God, if there's not a car in my driveway tomorrow morning, I will be crying the whole day. These are real. I hate my white iPhone. I want a black one. I'm so jealous. This is the second one. I'm so jealous of those who got a white iPhone. I got an ugly black one. If I don't get an Xbox for Christmas, I'm going to spend the whole Christmas day crying and giving my family the silent treatment. Was I the only one who didn't get an iPad? I mean, I got the car, but that's another story completely. One last one. Other than getting a Camaro and a Nintendo Switch, this Christmas really stinks. We get caught up in it. We laugh at those in a negative way, but we get caught up in that. We complain about things when all so much is grand and good. So we got these things that rob from us. What is it? It is a pride that we think we got into that. We got a critical spirit. And the third thing is just carelessness, just carelessness, not paying attention. You know, somebody once said, if the stars only came out once a year, we'd be out there all night to watch them. Isn't that true? Because they're there every day. We take it for granted. I do it, but there are times, like particularly maybe I'm going hunting in the morning on these winter nights when the sky is so clear, and it's just beautiful to see, and I think, why don't I look up more? You know, the Israelites went through this. They were in the wilderness, and they grumbled about not having any food, so God fed them. He sent them manna from heaven. This, this crusty bread, I mean, they got heavenly tacos, okay, every day. They had a miracle before them every day that they woke up, except for the Sabbath, but he took care of that too. So they had this, they had this miracle, but they complained because it's the same old thing. It's the same old thing. That's carelessness. That's not seeing light. So whether it's pride or carelessness or whether it's critical spirit, you know, there are things that we won't be grateful for. We'll never be grateful if we allow those robbers to come in and, and grab them from us, okay? But if we fight those off and we don't become careless and we're not critical and we, we truly, truly love the life that God has given us, we will begin to savor each day and to see the blessings in each day and the people that God sends around us. 
And I would say this, I say this often around Holland. If there is ever a nation that God allowed to be seated on the planet Earth, it is America that ought to be thankful. And setting in that are you and I as Christians, we ought to be so grateful and so thankful, we ought not allow anything to rob that from us. But what does the Bible say about Thanksgiving? There are some things specifically about it that are not about the day. It is about the heart. And number one in that is that Thanksgiving should be expressed. You ever saw somebody say, well, why didn't you say thank? Well, they know I'm thankful. You know, I remember we had a guy in this church one time, and his wife said, he never tells me he loves you. He said, I told you I love you. If I change my mind, I'll let you know, Okay. He didn't express it, didn't say it. If it's not expressed, does it exist? We don't know. One of the choruses we sing comes out of Psalm 100, and it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. In other words, if you want to come to praise, you need to have some thanksgiving around you. David said in Psalm 107, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We should express it. We should say it. We should show it. We give thanks to God, thanks to people around us, just thanks for what's happening in our life. In Luke chapter 10, you know this story well, about the 10 lepers. Jesus comes upon them. They cry out to him, son of David, have mercy on us. And and he heals them. He heals all 10 of them. Matter of fact, he said, go present yourself to the priest. And as soon as they turn to go that way, the leprosy is healed. And out of the 10, how many comes back? Uno. One. One comes back. And Jesus says this to him. He says to him, Because of that, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Now, why would he say that? He was already healed, right? He was already healed. It's because Jesus is talking about something deeper than the physical healing that happened to him. Jesus says, because of your gratitude, because you were willing to turn back, because you saw where this miracle came from, because you saw where the gift of life resides, because you turned around, he says, you get a spiritual one, a mental one. The true meaning is there in the King James. He he was made whole. You are whole. You become one. And we are made whole by our thanksgiving. Psychologists tell us that, that, that sincere gratitude and thanksgiving is the healthiest of all human emotions. If you can grasp the fact that you are blessed, it changes your life. There's a famous, he's called the father of stress studies, a guy by the name of Hans Saddle, and he, he said that gratitude produces more positive emotion emotional energy than any other attitude in life. So it benefits you. It probably helps you feel better if you get a little more grateful. That's what it means. But you express that. But that expression doesn't just go to other people. It, it will enlarge. It, it helps you, but it also endears you to other people, and it brings you together. But it's not just for that. It's, of course, when I look upward. <laughs> My gratitude expressed toward the Lord. This heaven look, it endears us to the Lord. It lifts him up. It magnifies him. It's when we say, I am dependent on you. I am in need of you. I recognize what you're doing in my life, God. I recognize it. Because when we're not grateful, it can have the opposite effect. Listen to this verse. Romans 1.21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. That passage implies that people who are ungrateful will eventually fall away. That if you don't bring thanks to God, if you don't see him, that your hearts will harden. The verse speaks to the fact that pride has allowed them to pull away from God, that pride inhibits them from thanking God, therefore they never praise Him and they become cold toward Him. That is the negative effect of what happens when you do not express thanksgiving. It should be expressed, thank you God. How do you, how do you say thank you to God? Well, I'll give you some hints, okay? 
Number one, you spend time with him. I, this 30 minutes doesn't count, okay? This hour doesn't count. You spend other time with him as well. Well, I come to church and I paid my allegiance for the week. That is not the attitude. It's that you spend time with him. We've had a pass of folks at our house this week, and uh, because of the messed up uh, bedding arrangements, Jim and I have been getting to sleep together. Well, I love that. Jim and I, although he is a terrible bed partner, he kicks and he snores and he does all that stuff. But anyway, it has allowed us to lay down in the bed at night and to say a prayer. It's just the two of us. And we've been able to thank God for, for just everything that happens. We spent time hunting together and all those things. It means something when you spend that quality time in Thanksgiving. How do you think God feels about that when you do that with him? How do you think he feels about that? You can serve his church. You can share his plan of salvation with somebody. Reach out to somebody that's hurting. You can give God your time, your talent, and your treasure. These are ways that I praise him. I, I praise him, and that is thanksgiving to him. So number one, Thanksgiving, Bible says, should be expressed, okay? If you feel thankful about something, say something, okay? What do they say? If you see something, say something. If you see something you're thankful for, say something about it, okay? It should be expressed. Number two, it should be expansive. Expansive. It should be big and growing, okay? I've got a picture for you, okay? Throw it up here. What if you woke up today with only the things you thanked God for yesterday? You know, we take it for granted, don't we? Most of you don't know this, but when I woke up this morning, I come over and turn the heat on in the church, and I noticed it wasn't getting warmer. So lo and behold, I go out to the tank. We don't have any gas. And I won't mention the name of the place because I, I don't want them telling you what the preacher said to them. Okay? No, I didn't. I wasn't ugly to them. But I called them. They came right out and put some in. But, you know, my wife says, your daddy's having a fit this morning. And I said, no, I'm going to be thankful because I've got to preach on it. You know, I've got to live up to it, you know. And, you know. You know what I was thankful for? That I didn't have to go chop down a tree to provide heat for my family, for my church. That's the way they used to have to do it. Amen? I go to my dad's in the holidays, or any time I go to my dad's, I shouldn't say the holidays. Man, he watches westerns. Any of you old men watching westerns? Good. Grace is a lie. Westerns and... Uh, and it's the season for, for open enrollment for the uh, Social Security health. Oh, my word. That's all I saw was people shooting people and signing up for insurance. That's all I saw. <laughs> anyway, I've lost my train of thought now. Uh, but uh, I watch those Westerns, and, and you know, I see what I was, I was trying to get Dolly acclimated to being, you know, can you imagine being a woman headed out across the prairie with a little baby like that? Or they come in there, there was a blizzard blowing in. They were out, oh, we got to fix the cracks that were in the wall. Our hunting club years ago, we hunted in an old house that was just a slat house. You couldn't get that thing warm. And we were watching that thing this way. I said, boy, those were the good old days, weren't they? <laughs> I like to walk over on the wall, and there's this thing that has hardly any tension on it. I can bump it up and I bump it down. You know, amen? You ought to be thankful every time you walk up to that thermostat and tell that thing how will you want your house to be. Is that not a blessing? Mm. It ought to be expansive. It ought to grow, sprawling, sizable, generous. That ought to be the way that your Thanksgiving is. A living, growing thing. As we get older, we ought to have greater Thanksgiving because of what we've seen in our life and what we've been through and what we've gotten, a, gotten through with maybe difficulty at times. What do you mean by expansive? Well, it ought to include the blessings of life. Of course, it ought to include the blessings of life. But even those we overlook sometimes. You know, my wife, bless her. She is a wonderful wife. God bless her. And you know one of the things that she loves to give thanks for is when there's a big pile of dishes piled up in the sink. No, she doesn't. Okay, that's a joke. All right, who, who likes that? But you know what it means? We had a lot of food to eat, and we did. We had family around to help us eat it, and boy, did they help us. Jamie helped a lot. He ate everything in the house. You know, we, you know do you understand what I mean? I mean, something that's really a negative, it's, it, it's a positive, it's a good thing. We should be thankful. 
Because two-thirds of the earth, population of the earth, go hungry. See, here's what happens. Our prayers are very general. Oh, God, we thank you for the blessings of the day. Well, the old song says that we should count our blessings and that we should name them one by one. That's a good practice. Don't say, God, thank you for the blessings of the day. What if he said, well, which one? Well, I'll take them away until you tell me which one you were talking about. He's not going to do that to you, but I probably would. Why don't you name those blessings? The blessings of life. We need to be it growing and expanding in those things. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. A second thing we should thank God for are the burdens of life. Oh, that's not a good one. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Ephesians 5.20 said, Always giving thanks. You may think that Paul made a mistake or, or that, well, that's easy for him to say. Neither one of those things are true. He meant what he said, and number two, it wasn't easy for him. For him. Paul's life had been far more difficult than anybody's in here, okay? Paul had been run out of town. He had been beaten. He had been whipped. He had been in prison. He had been betrayed by friends. He had been shipwrecked. He knew what it was like to be naked and cold and hungry. He knew what it was like to live a tough life. What is, when's the last time somebody stoned you and drug you out of town to die? Yet Paul says, in everything, give thanks. He didn't say give thanks for everything. You commit people. <laughs> that, 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 you know. What was his attitude about that stuff? Let me just read some. Romans 8, 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing to the glory that will be revealed to us. 2 Corinthians 12, 10. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulty. He delights in them. For when I am weak, I am strong. Philippians 1, 12. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel perspective. I read about a pastor talking about a lady in his church, and it's just one of those things where I go, oh, God, how could I ever complain about anything? There's a lady by the name of Ray Tompkins. She was 35 years old. She had just finished college. She's gone back to college, and got, she's a mother of three boys. They were age 6, 15, and 18. She had just gotten a new job at GTE, and she developed lupus. Her oldest son got sent to prison for dealing drugs. She eventually got so weak that she lost weight, couldn't hardly hold her head up, get in and out of the bed, any of those things. The pastor went and visited her one time when she was in the hospital during that stint, and she talked about that her sickness had been a blessing. And he said, how was that absolutely possible? And she said, it has allowed me to spend a lot more time with my Lord. And I've actually got to share the gospel with success with some people that come in my room. Doesn't that make you, I mean, it does me. It makes me mad at Tim, you know? In our weakness, God can make us strong, help us through the tough times that we just could not get through. I'll be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm better at this. I have learned that in the midst of trouble to, to, to say, you know, difficulty, you know, whatever's going on in my life, to say, God, thank you for being with me. Thank you for the strength you give me. Thank you that I'm not crazy because of all the weight of this. There is, you see, I believe Paul's saying, God be thankful for them. That, that's not right. In them. That God allows them to be used for his greater glory, for my greater good. I think about the Philippian jailer. He was ready to kill himself. You remember that? He's ready to kill himself because he thought all the prisoners were gone. But in the midst of that, Peter and Silas were praying and singing songs and praising the Lord through their chains. 
Because they knew God, and they knew that he was going to bring good about it. And, and not only did he get them free, but he saved this jailer and his entire household. Because of their joy, the jailer found his joy. It, it is To understand the burdens of life like that, it's special, guys. But there's a third thing here under this, and that's about the, the benefits of life as well. The things that God gives you. You know, I mentioned the Israelites earlier about their, their, their manna from heaven, their heavenly tacos. Here's what it is. When they, when they focused on what they didn't have instead of what they did have. <laughs> you know? How many of us do this? We, we focus on that one thing we don't have. Well, I need that new you fill in the blank, or they've got a shinier fill in the blank, and we fill that stuff in, and we don't look around us and see the blessings and see the benefits that God has already given us in this life. They focus on what they didn't have. They failed to see. Here's the idea. We add to a prayer list. We even do it through the church. We have a prayer list, right? We need to be adding to our praise list, <laughs> adding to the praise list about the good things guy by the name of Jeff Moore back in 1992. Some of y'all wasn't even born then. Um, he, he had a song, and he, in the words, let me, let me just read them. I won't sing them to you, I promise, okay? He says, well, I wonder what today we'll see. Will I find my dreams, or will I stare in the face of tragedy? Whatever may come, whatever may be, of this I am sure. I am forgiven and free, and I will live like I believe it is good to be alive. I will live like I believe it is good to be alive. And in the court, I, I, it is good to be alive, to feel the wind in my face, to see the blue of the sky. It's days like this, I realize what a gift it is. It is good to be alive. We all go through bad things, okay? We all do. And sometimes to the point of despair. I mean, those things just tend to drag you to the door of despondency. But I'm telling you, friend, if you will look around and see and realize that it is good to be alive, it is good, and to feel the wind on your face and to have a friend or a family member to give you a hug or to have somebody laugh at your stupid joke or just to have somebody to tell about your day or like us, to touch the face of a newborn baby. All of those things, it is good to be alive. Amen? They did an experiment in New York City years ago where they took a guy and they dressed him up as blind and they set him on a street corner begging. And they literally had a sign that says, I'm blind. And they, and they set him out of the corner and that day he collected $14. Well, they let some time pass and they go back out there and they set him up again, but this time the only thing that changed is this sign. And it said, I'm blind and it's spring. And he collected 60-something dollars. And the, the point of it was is that it made more people grateful that they were able to hear the birds sing and see the beauty of the sky and see the trees and see all these things. And it made them more grateful and they gave more. They realized how blessed they were, the benefits that they had, the beautiful flowers and the birds and the sunrise and the sunsets. And Christians, we have benefits the rest of the world don't even know about. We are forgiven and we are free. And we have an eternity waiting for us. So not only should Thanksgiving be expressed and, it's, and expanded, if you will, expansive, it is expected. It is expected. Do you know what Paul said in the verse that I read? Give thanks in all circumstances. And he says this, because... This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It is God's will that you be thankful. Some of you have been wandering around, well, if I knew what God's will was, I'd do it. Well, your God's will is for you to pick your head up and be nice to somebody and be thankful. Amen? You wanted God's will, there it is, for you to be thankful for what you have. That is, that is the easiest God's will you're going to get today. And God is doing that because he knows that it will change you. It will change you. 
And what it does, this, this, this gratitude becomes a mark. It's a mark of a growing Christian, okay? A growing Christian. I have been reminded, I knew this all along, but I reminded that babies are ungrateful. <laughs> Amen. You feed it, you change the diaper, you bounce it, you walk it, you do all these things. It's just ungrateful. It just hollers at you. Ah! That's all it does. We have to teach them to be grateful. Teach them to be thankful. One of the blessings in my heart, I don't mean to make this a gym sermon today, is that like, like he is learning this so well and he's getting so much better at it. We went, he, he, he got a deer a couple of weeks ago and then he killed two this weekend so he needs to slow down. He's about to break pop with the, anyway, um, with the process and phase. Anybody need a deer? Let me know, okay. Um, what was I going to tell? Oh, the last deer, he loves the jerky that they make. They make this big jerky. So that stuff's expensive. I mean, it's like $12 a bag and stuff, but because he asked me, and I do everything he asked me to do, uh, we, I made the whole thing, except for the loins, and just uh, the whole thing in jerky. I won't even tell you what it cost me, other than $174, okay? All right? But listen, we, we didn't make a big deal. We went down there and got it. We got back in the truck, and Jim gets one out. He said, the guy told him, he said, you need to let it thaw out. Jim didn't let it thaw out. He ate it cold, okay? He ate it for, anybody ever had an ice, uh, uh, icy uh, uh, made out of deer meat? It's what Jim ate. But anyway, huh, digress. We get in the truck. He jumps from his seat over in my and gives him a big hug. He said, thank you, Bob. I know that seems silly to you to tell that story, but it mean, that means you're growing. If some of you may be babes in Christ, but you don't look like it looking at you, you need to grow up and start thanking God for the child. Is, is, is. And we've all done it with our children, haven't we? Somebody gives us a piece of candy. What you say? <laughs> you know, what you say? You ever heard that joke? Got, surely you have. Woman's at the store with a little son, and the guy says, hey, here, just give him this. Gives him a sucker. And she goes, son, what do you say? Charge it. Charge it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but we're always doing that with our kids. You know, why? We want them to grow up and be grateful. It's what God wants of you. It's what God wants of you. And when we express it and it's expanding, it helps us to grow. But the second thing is it's a mark of a giving Christian. When we realize how much God's done for us and how much he continues to do for us, we're more than happy to give to him, to give to him. Somebody once said this, it's pretty easy to say, there is no thanksgiving without thanks and giving, right? Thanks and giving. To give to the Lord. I think about the blessings in our church, guys, and you know, God has just blessed us so much, and we ought to be investing in His Word. We ought to be doing things for Him. James wrote in 117, every good gift and every perfect gift, you got any good gifts, huh? From the Lord? It's from above and comes down from the Father of lights. It amazes me. We'll go to a restaurant. And we'll give that waitress or waiter, if they give us you know, decent service, we'll give them 15%. Some of you give them more. I like to surprise them every once in a while, give them a big, big one, you know. I mean, good grief. They're, they're, we, we think, oh, that's such a blessing. But we hold on to our tithe. I don't understand that. We'll give somebody that's serving us for about 20 minutes this 15% tip, and we won't give God his 10%. <laughs> That's not recognizing the blessings around you. That's not being a giving Christian. God loves a cheerful giver. Be one, okay? Be one. The last one here is that it's a mark of a glowing Christian, a glowing Christian. You know, if you're truly thankful to God, it shows up, okay? You're not going to be critical and whiny and grumpy all the time. You're just not. Why? Because you're eternal, eternally thanks. You're eternally thankful for what God's done in your life. If you're an old grump, it's hard for anybody to know that you love the Lord. I'm telling you that, okay? 
And the thing is, when you go through those difficult times, they won't break you. Why? Because your eyes are on the Lord. Paul, again, talking, I've told you about his life. 2 Corinthians 4 8. For we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. He says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, so that we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Henry Frost was a missionary to, to, to China for a long time. He wrote this in his journal. He said, I had received some bad, sad news from home. Deep shadows had covered my soul. I prayed, but the darkness did not vanish. I summoned myself to endure, but the darkness only deepened. Then I went to an inland station on the wall of a mission home and saw these words that said, Try Thanksgiving. And he says, I tried Thanksgiving, and in a moment the shadow was gone, and it did not return. See, the psalmist was right when he said, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It's a good thing. I heard about an old farmer. He went to the city, and the restaurant was busy, and he ended up, they were setting people together, strangers. They were setting them close by each other. And he sat next to this businessman. This guy's got his nice suit on and everything. He looks over. Well, they brought the food to the table, and the farmer, like he always did, bowed his head for the blessing. And the guy said, well, that's kind of old-fashioned, don't you think? You know, well-educated people don't, don't pray at the table. They don't pray for the meal. The farmer, you know, he's kind of sheepishly. He says, well, you know, they're... That's what I do at my house, but there's some of my household that don't. And the guy says, oh, so nice to know that you have family that are sensible and educated and they're enlightened. Who are they? He said, they're my hogs. They're my hogs. We're like pigs sometimes. We root around eating the acorns and never look up and see where they come from. And it's a shame, guys. Have you been through something you've been praying about, praying about? Maybe you should try Thanksgiving. Try Thanksgiving. So the day is gone, but the Spirit is not, right? We need this perspective about Thanksgiving, that it is who we are, and it is our, God's will for our life. It is our duty to be a grateful, thankful people. I guarantee you, if you pick up that attitude, it will cause you to be a servant for the kingdom. You know why? Because people will notice it, and they will ask you about it, and you will be able to tell them the good reason that you are so grateful and so thankful. Let's pray together, okay? Father, It's, this is not a Thanksgiving Day thing. It's a, it's a daily Thanksgiving way thing. It is the way you want us to be. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we come here today, and I pray that most everybody here knows you, Lord. But if they don't, what a day for them to look up and say, thank you for my salvation, Lord and to turn their heart to you. But for those of, you, of us that are Christians, God, may it overflow in us. May it spill out on people around us. Because there's not a person in here that cannot say, I am blessed today. So Father, help us to, to be that person that changes their life forever because we look up. We thank you immensely for your love, God, for your mercy and your grace and for never leaving our side, even when things get dark. We can always feel your hand, and you always hold the light before us, God. Make us grateful, God. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You stand up. We're going to sing.
and I've already had my one experience. This happens every year. I turned around, and I thought, who's that standing there right behind me? I do it every year. Oh, Joseph gets me. So anyway, I'm glad that you were here. May the Lord bless you. See you Wednesday night, okay? Come and join us. I'm going to let Gary dismiss us with a word.